Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. By far one of the best experiences of Monster Hunter that I have had in a while. And it's totally not because of most of the stories based around this one monster, Gormagala. I just... <laughs> to totally not. I just want to take the time to really talk about this game and my experience with the fact that all of this content was literally slammed into the 3DS. It feels like Capcom asked Nintendo how much data they wanted to put into the game and they maximized it until there was literally no room on that cartridge. Out of all the games I have played on the 3DS, 3DS, I feel like this is the one where they have used literally every ounce of the 3DS cartridge with nothing left. For those that don't know what Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate is, sit down, relax, because this is going to be a long one. Before we get further into the video, this is actually my first time really making videos in this format. I really want to explore multiple games and talk about my personal experience with them. So if y'all enjoy this video, feel free to leave a like, and also tell me about your first experience with Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, or if it's something you would like to try out. I would definitely recommend it. I also live stream these games on Twitch, with Monster Hunter and a variety of other games as well. We'd love to see you around! The basic premise of Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate is that you, as a new hunter, gets thrown into different quests. The Cavalier shows you a scale that you will later find out is Shigaru Magala later in the story. You as a hunter starts getting stronger later on and progressing while fighting other monsters. You later fight the stronger monsters known as the Frenzy Monsters, which are stronger versions of the normal monsters that you have fought before. You will then later find out that the cause of the Frenzied was from the monster called Gormagala. He is the one inflicting the infection to the other monsters around it. Then as you fight more Frenzied monsters, you progress through the game and you eventually fight the big bad boss of the game Shigaru Magala. This is where the fun begins. The game starts off with being a weaponless hunter on a sand boat to get to your next destination and start your journey with as a new hunter. You run into a gigantic monster or an overgrown dolphin literally jumping over uh, to ruin your day, Darren Moran. Then you as a hunter without a weapon, without a weapon, have to go out and get the hat back that the cavalier lost that lands on the monster Darren Moran. So you tiptoe back on its back to grab his hat You then build a connection with the cavalier. After you land on the island, he reveals to you this big, shiny scale. This is such an amazing way to introduce the story. It shows the creatures and, and the beginning of the story that will destroy you. You get shown a big goal to go after. Then as you go on land, you get introduced with a mystery monster you want to solve. Who is this monster and what are you going after? You then go throughout the story hunting random monsters. Something that I noticed is how they literally have a cutscene for almost every single monster in this game. The cutscene starts when you go to, into the location that the monster is in. It shows you the hunter and the monster. That that you are encountering and it shows the intensity of the situation you are in. It makes your hunter seem really small in comparison to what is going on, which makes the fight seem more intimidating. Even if the boss is just a great baggy! This is something that I missed them doing when I played Rise. When in Rise, you can start the hunt and be immediately introduced with a cutscene of the monster. This takes away the intensity, at least for me, so it was something really cool to see in 4 Ultimate. But it is as well for Monster Hunter World and Iceborne, where they show the cutscene of you encountering the monster and hunting it as well. Really brought the intensity of the monster you were fighting. Some of the most memorable monsters for me have to be the Tetsukabra. His armor is pretty good to start off with as well, and it lasted me throughout most of the playthrough, until I got into high rank. The multiple things he does during the fights as well is amazing. The way he hops around like a frog and pounces on you while grabbing a boulder that can literally one-shot you. Then there are other monsters with amazing designs like Celta's Queen, who is just two monsters in one. Zemtrius who puffs up to become huge and belly flops into you. Gypsoros who after a while will play dead mid-fight. There are so many characters with random gimmicks and have so so much character that I love him. Mm -hmm. 
Then there is my favorite monster in the whole franchise, Gormagala. I was introduced to this monster when I first played Generations Ultimate. The way this monster was introduced in the game was amazing. You are on your journey to your next destination, a mysterious monster appears to ruin your day. You then have an all-out brawl with this monster in such a tiny space, then you fight him later on as the story progresses. You find out that it has affected all the monsters that you fight into frenzied monsters. The way this monster works is amazing. When the monster is enraged, the entire area around gets engulfed in darkness. Then Gore turns into this bright purple color with his horns, the feelers. With this, it becomes more aggressive and deals more damage. As the story develops, you run into other forms of Gore, like Chaotic Gore and Shigaru Magala. The Weapons of Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate This was also a game that introduced Insect Glaive and Charge Blade. Well, it was introduced in 4, but it was still a fun time. I played just a tiny bit of Insect Glaive. <laughs> Maybe, maybe a little bit. <laughs> this was great to get back into. I started off with a long sword, but couldn't get a full grasp of it since the sharpness gauge doesn't get fully recharged. It was shit! I switched to Insect Lave and things became a lot easier since I now cheese everything. For Ultimate, you can mount monsters constantly with the different weapons you have. Easiest way to mount is if you lunge off a platform and hit the monster to start the mount. Since Insect Lave is always in the air, when you hit the monsters, it automatically initiates the mount. So with Insect Lave, you can have three to six mounts, which is insane. I have yet to get into Charge Blade, but it is a weapon well worth the time. It is incredibly powerful as well. I heard from multiple people that this was when Charge Blade was in its prime. The endgame portion of the game was amazing, but I felt with all the world building that the story was mostly centered around Gore, Mergala, and Shigaru, so it was a bit overshadowed. What I mean by this is that, with all the story building from the introduction of the game, that there wasn't much story building for the rest of the game. There were so many monsters kind of overshadowing each other, with one being more powerful than the next. Seregius was introduced, who was an incredibly powerful monster, who was in the cover art for 4 Ultimate. The way they brought up his character was pretty cool. They introduced as a mystery monster that you later find out about in the middle of a hunt. They even brought in strong versions of the monsters that have overtaken the virus, known as Apex Monsters. We also have incredible fights like Dalamador and Gogmazios. Both of these monsters left me speechless. The way they came in, with their colossal size, leaving you to have to take down its parts to bring it down. It was incredible what they have done with these monsters. One of my most favorite experiences in this game was the multiplayer aspect of the game. This is rude. This is- oh, that works too. <laughs> my secret weapon. Your secret weapon blinding everything. Not Everybody. just the monster. <laughs> everything. <laughs> Once we figured out how to get to play this game in multiplayer- <laughs> Totally a different version of Far Ultimate! This game was uh, so much fun to play with others. It definitely made hunts a lot easier with four players on a hunt. It changes the pacing of the game so much. I am someone who loves playing with others and seeing multiplayer cutscenes with arm wrestling and people just in the hub is just so much fun. It's your first time playing Four Ultimate? It is absolutely my first time playing Four Ultimate and I'm super, super happy. But Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate is by far my favorite game that I've played in the series. I have only played through a few of the titles so far, but I plan on getting through the rest. There's still loads to this game as well, and still a lot of monsters and content I haven't covered for this video. Endgame content is endless with their many hidden hunts they have to offer. I could definitely say that this is my favorite game in the series for its amazing and unique monsters, some that I hate, but most that I love. I was introduced to Gormagala and Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, but I truly love that monster, and now with the game that covers this monster and what it can truly do. It is absolutely incredible how much they cram into the game for just a 3DS, where you can pour over 200 hours and still have loads to do.
Before we finish up this video, I just wanted to say something that I've been meaning to start for a while, and we just started a Patreon. For those of you who don't know, uh, these videos take a while to make, and I have someone usually helping out in making these videos as well. So the Patreon is there in support for what I do here on YouTube and uh, for other content like TikTok and things that I post. So this, this means a lot uh, for those of you that actually went out and supported already and I didn't even really announce it other than Twitter and Discord. I just want to say thank you uh, to T Ivory and Ulysses. You guys are the two uh, Patreons that have donated for the, the tier two, which is awesome. So you guys are the bikini captains, which I thought was like a fun thing. To <laughs> I just want to say huge tremendous thank you because your guys support really does mean a lot. If you guys want to continue supporting me and uh, continue seeing more videos like this, the Patreon will be linked in the description below. Patreon.com slash Skull. Thank you guys very much uh, for all the love and support. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, yeah, le please let me know what you guys think of War Ultimate and what your favorite Monster Hunter game is and why. I just love you guys. Take care.